This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, sliceonbroadway.com. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash awesomecast. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at sidekickmediaservices.com. Hey guys, it's time to get geeky, get awesome. It is the Awesome Cast episode seven. No, that's a different show. Four hundred and ninety-five, uh, and uh, we're ready to get geeky, get awesome. Right here in the Sorgatron Media Studios in Pittsburgh, PA, in full cold yellow, but we're we're still socially distancing uh, as as we go here. So with me, I got a whole crew with us right now. First of all, from Studio C with some running on some new hardware is John Chichilla. Hey, how's it going? How do I sound? You sound great. Awesome. The new new headset, new laptop, mm-hmm. new ring light, new life. New life. <laughs> Living it up. Living it up. Um, back with us. And also from Studio D out there is Katie Dudas, the Dudders. Hi. I have a newly remodeled Animal Crossing island behind me. Yes. There, there we go. Now I full screened it. Hey. There we go. My other setup wasn't working that I tried tonight. I was like, no, I'm seeing me too much. We got to fix this. So <laughs> 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 We're still experimenting with our Raspberry Pi setup uh, for Google Hangouts. So, so there, yeah, I don't know. This will be like, hey, here's the washed out webcam over the internet version of me uh, in the studio. So we can give you the other angle, I guess. So we're just figuring out how this all works in practice. Uh, that is how is the how is the island going? We'll get a full update from you later, though. No snapping yeah. turtles. I, <laughs> no, uh, just in real life. Just in real life. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Also back with us. Also back with us is uh, is uh, Brian Crawford of PGHMuseums.org. Arg. 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 Damn it! It's joining us. Maybe a more exciting website. <laughs> it might be dot .org. .org. Where's the dot .org domain? <laughs> I want everything dot .org. It's just the pirate version. Then you have something for for pirate <laughs> National Pirate Day, like every every year in September. I think it is. So, exactly. Brian, Brian, how you doing? How you holding up down there, down the street from us? <laughs> you know what? I'm really enjoying the coronavirus. You know, I, I've come full, full <laughs> circle. Originally, I was like against it. Now I'm like uh, the other day I took the tea into work. And I was completely alone. I had the entire train to myself. And I'm thinking, you know what? This is peaceful. I can deal with this. There's your sound bite. Brian Crawford, pro-coronavirus. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's where we're at now. So no, it is, it is uh, the, 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 around, other than the, the mass recession that's happening in unemployment, it's kind of nice now. Yeah, Actually. there's some parts of it, you know, I can get if, behind. Not you, all of it, but, you yeah, know, yeah. it and it's not 100%, but it's just like, you know, I, I can take a leave of some parts of it. Uh, yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> find the positive in everything. What's that? I said find the positive find in everything. Find the positive in everything, <laughs> of course. Uh, well, this is the show where we try to find the positive in everything as much as possible. This is the Awesome Cast. Uh, you can check out everything at awesomecast.com. You can drop us a line on our uh, on our tw- on our Twitter, on our Facebook page for Awesome Cast, where a lot of things happen. Uh, <laughs> That's such the general things happen, um, <laughs> <laughs> including the, the awesome cast Facebook group where a lot of stories are shared throughout the week, including some that we're going to share here tonight. Uh, and also, if you're on the Facebook, you'll get a notification when we go live every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern time. Also streaming on some other platforms, including Periscope, YouTube and Twitch. If I did all the things right. Um, again, no producer tonight. So I'm kind of doubling, doubling up on, on, on things I'm doing. So so bear with me here. Also, please subscribe and rate us on your favorite podcast. If you're watching us live right now, please do us a favor and uh, hit that like, favorite, share button to let people know that the show is happening and there's something going on here. Send that little algorithm out to to the Mark and the Twitter and the and, and everybody else out there and the YouTube so they know. Uh, and also, please, uh, uh, if you you know, subscribe and um, if you catch us later, uh, also please share and leave a review on whatever podcast uh, listening 
apparatus program that you are using right now. Uh, we are across all of them. Should be all of them. If we're missing, let us know. Then you're probably not listening to us, actually. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm doing the math in my head. Uh, thank you to our audio partners, our friends at the405media.com and postindustrial.com. They're sharing some great po- 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 Pittsburgh podcasts. I watched Roger Rabbit this last week, so I got a little porky pig in me. Um, so, And also, uh, thank you to our supporters over at patreon.com slash awesomecast. Our friends at the Coffee Club, Matt Weller, John DeGore, and John Carmen, as well as our friends at the Fan of the Show level, Michael Fedor, and pghmuseums.org, our friend Brian over here. You guys can support the show, too, at patreon.com slash awesomecast. And thank you so much, everybody, who has been supporting us through the goings-on in the world as well. Uh, we really do appreciate it. So let's get into our awesome things of the week. And since I already leaned into the questioning of it a little bit, uh, uh, Dutters, what is going on with, uh, uh, with, with Animal Crossing here? Great story from this week. Oh, I love this. Um, so Carissa, uh, Char, she's one of my friends on Animal Crossing, not to be confused with my niece, Charlotte. Uh, but uh, she, did, she works at the Science Center. And each week they've been doing these fun videos, like at-home videos. And she is just amazing and she if you've ever gone to the buell planetarium you know recently she programs a lot of the laser shows Mm -hmm. and she super cool loves space space exploration and she built a whole annex too because in in your um, animal crossing museum you have you know the dinosaurs and you have the fossil you know the fossils and the dinosaurs the fish the you know the uh, butterflies and it's really neat but she loves space so she on the side of her um, museum she built a whole separate annex and it, she, you were able to build like uh, the moon and and different things, and and it's all real live stuff that has a story and actually was used. You know, there there's a spacecraft, and so she takes you on a tour of this annex on her island, which is really really neat. And then she pairs it up with with videos of the actual real life, so you get to learn about these things that they took in Animal Crossing and and are real life things. And it's 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 such a cool video, and it's so neat to see. And I, I was lucky enough to see it, uh, well, I guess in person with uh, when I visited her island. <laughs> but uh, it's it's so neat. It's, if you have kids that are into space, you got to check it out. And it's like I said, the video is so well put together. And it's so I, I was just like staring the whole time. Like I just I was just so interesting in the fact that, you know, she was using this game to connect it to space. And it's it's it was it's neat. And she's phenomenal. That's awesome. And you were you were just telling us about the kind of museum. Uh, uh, function of the game uh, over the last couple of weeks, I think too. So uh, th- that's kind of a that's kind of a fun little thing. Uh, uh, so so I love I love the timing of this because we do have Brian with PGH Museums here, and and it, it's <laughs> so so now we have a, another digital museum. I know Brian, if you were looking at this kind of thing with the Animal Crossing uh, uh, side of museums, I think it's really really cool. I think it's a great way to. Uh, I mean, not only right now during this whole situation where everyone is social distancing, but I think it's it's a great tool in general because it's a great way to bring maybe like younger people into the museums and, and get them to experience it in a different way. And I'm all about that. I think that's like such a that's the direction that a lot of museums need to go. They need to be innovative and creative. So I think it's really, really cool. And I do know her as well. We used to work together. She did the snack podcast with nice. uh, Ralph Crew. So. Oh, that's so funny! <laughs> yeah, <laughs> world, small podcast yeah. world. Yes. Well, I think I think probably something else, Brian, that you're seeing a lot of is just the accessibility now for so many things in Pittsburgh that weren't previously accessible to folks that couldn't get out of their house before, mm-hmm. and I love it. Yeah, that's a good point too, because some people just can't get to these museums and get to places because of uh, physical reasons um, or, or other reasons that are outside of the virus in general. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, definitely, it's, it's a great. Tool. And hopefully a lot of this stuff stays. I really hope mm-hmm. that these museums continue to innovate. And that's one thing that like we're trying to do with PGH museums is work with some of our affiliates to be like, hey, we can help you do some digital stuff. And, and we have gotten some of them to, to do some Zoom conversations, but I haven't been able to nice. get them to, to go any further. So I'm going to try to get well, some more digital work, especially uh, now that things are opening up a little bit. You can start shopping an Animal Crossing expert, just like your friend <laughs> from the Carnegie Science Center. But if she's too busy, Dutters would be the other one. <laughs> there we go. That is as right. She, as she I love weekly flexes her Animal Crossing skills. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that I is like a skill it. I do not have. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Um so uh Chilla, what's your awesome thing of the week? So I 
A week ahead of um, delivery schedule, I picked up the MacBook Pro 16 inch. And is that um, what we're I, viewing you through right now? It's what you're viewing me through right now. Now I have an external webcam and some other stuff mm-hmm. booked up to it. But I will say, unlike maybe the average person, I have one cable running into it. So I have a US I have a USB C dock for work that has everything that I normally use pre-plugged into it. So mm-hmm. typically when I switch to the show, because I had an older MacBook Pro 13 and I didn't have USB-C, I had, to, I had a separate hub. I had to move USB ports around, all of that. I plug in one cable, everything powers up, the headset that I'm using, um, the webcam, everything automatically flips over. Um, and it also charges the MacBook Pro. Now I'm interested to see because my my hub is really only rated for 65 watts, but it's keeping me at 100% and charged. So um, I can I, the display is beautiful. I haven't jammed out with the the speakers yet, but the uh, the other thing is the trackpad is ginormous, and I will say. I haven't used the touch bar yet, but just having the fingerprint scanner there is very nice. So this is your first touch bar? This is my first touch bar based Mac. Yeah, because I had the 2013, 2013 or 2015 MacBook Pro. Okay. It was 2015 MacBook Pro. So, um, yeah, so it's, I yeah, I had my, my old... The old one was just Thunderbolt and old school. Awesome. Awesome. So, so yeah, so you, so you had a pretty good jump there uh, for specs. It's, I'm glad you jumped on it. I, I have a feeling you're, you're just fine getting the one now versus waiting. Mm-hmm. So, awesome. so, so I'm, well, because it was between this and the 13 inch. Remember, do I buy the brand new 13 or do I yeah. go back yeah. to the 16? I will say it was funny because I was arguing with myself about weight. Mm -hmm. And while it's the 16 inch, it's only a half pound lighter and you are old or it's only a half pound heavier than my 13 because the older 13 I have is almost three quarters of a pound heavier than the current 13. So even though I went up in size, I didn't go up as much in weight as you would suspect only because my old laptop was old. Mm hmm. Oh, and, and which is important since this is something that you do carry on the T, as we mentioned before. Not that you have a lot of people to share that with right now. Yes, that is very true. <laughs> when, when I do return to work mm-hmm. um, and leave the bunker, <laughs> I will I will be carrying it with me on the daily. Awesome. Do you like having the larger screen size? Um. Yes and no. So I like it when I am up on my couch. But it's weird having this large of a display in my office because I have, I'll have to take a picture. Um, I have a 32 inch 4K display and I'm used to having kind of like the tiny display just to keep a window or two open up over here. Mm -hmm. Um, And it's weird having a very large display. Uh, Partners in the chat room asking if you installed any games on the touch bar. I have not actually, I have not really hacked my touch bar. Like I, I, I kind of just, I have a thing about just wanting the, like I haven't rearranged anything because I like having the stock experience so I know what other people deal with on a regular basis and, and I want to know that so I can so tell people I, how to use it. It only came yesterday and like I said, it came actually a week ahead of schedule. Um, so my priority yesterday afternoon and evening was getting operational enough like I moved stuff around in my office and mm-hmm. then got everything to make sure I could make this podcast <laughs> um, work on it. So I will say I'll be working on a lot of other items, yeah. but it was pretty much get the requirements installed. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then I'll, I'll, I'll probably at least get some of those. I can't remember what the name of the app was that, that lets you add kind of macros and other stuff to your touch bar. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. I'm very interested in playing around with sidecar. Um, cause now I can wirelessly display to my iPad as well. Um, and I'm actually thinking about the Elgato deck. The stream deck. Um, yeah, but they have the, you have to pay for it, but it, they put it right on your iOS device. Oh, okay. 
So there's instead of buying the hardware, you can actually put it on soft. You can put the software version on a phone or tablet. Nice, so, nice. Hey, that can be awesome handy. I, well, the ones that I've seen for the ATEM or, or Blackmagic ATEM are like fifty bucks. So uh, as a comparison point. Mm-hmm. So and and because it's just software, you, we use to switch this program that that interfaces with the hardware we have. There is a hardware version, but that's more expensive, kind of like the Stream Deck. So so I mean, just comparison point, I guess. So yeah, and I couldn't. I I mean, I still I don't. Think we're going to see the atoms coming back in stock for at least another no multiple no, weeks no 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 no, so, no no i actually have two places have i have an email alert set up if they return to stock but i'm guessing i'll be doing some software stuff for for the foreseeable future yep brian what is your awesome thing yeah so my awesome thing tries to tackle the question that everyone has when restaurants reopen, but they're still requiring you to wear masks, how do you go out to a restaurant? So there is a robot mask that has been invented. And uh, this mask has a little contraption that you hold in your hand. And when you press it, it'll open a slit in the mask that prov- that provides a hole for you to eat and drink. Um, it's It looks kind of interesting. It looks, it looks kind of creepy, almost like something that, that would be in a bad sci-fi. But on the other side, I mean, it is it is useful. But I, I wonder because they say that these masks, and, and if you look at the video, it, it looks like the mask that everyone is wearing—the disposable masks—and they're not supposed to last that long. So mm-hmm. I wonder the shelf life of this robot in terms of actually co- allowing the mask to be useful in mitigating the spread of the virus. Um, but it looks neat. It's a neat idea. It's a little more high tech than the uh, picture I just shared on Facebook, which has a guy that made a mask out of his uh, pants and has a zipper that he can zip down <laughs> to I stick get, a bottle of beer in there. It's, it's but lot, it, it it looks cool. It's a lot of function. Yeah, you have this little kind of uh, squeeze device, and it it opens up the lever that that allows food to come in. Um, because yeah, that that was something that we we talked about and that people were asking about because you know. Uh, Katie was a part of our our uh, uh, adventure to to visit a friend of ours out in Evans City uh, for a little kind of birthday and lunch kind of thing, and we socially distanced and stuff. But it's still like you know uh, uh, we, we had to take the mask off, but we're far enough away we felt we were, like we were kind of safe. Uh, so I guess this kind of as we go back to eating in around people in restaurant situations, maybe this is a solution. Um, I, I don't know. I don't know how realistic this is to do in mass right like that, yeah that's, that's no, the biggest and question like said, and costly the mask, mm-hmm. i'm sorry and costly too right yeah i imagine it's expensive and if you look at the mask like i said it doesn't look like a mask that is like washable it looks mm-hmm. like one of those ones that you just throw away so i just it just seems like it would be extremely expensive to come up with that device absolutely every that, time that's what surprised me is that it wasn't one of the washable ones like from the looks of it it's just like a hinge if they could put it in a in one of the cloth masks and you removed the the hose for kind of opening and closing it, I could see it being reusable. It might make sense. Mm-hmm. That, that's how I feel. Yeah, and, and one thing I I think that's funny about it is like it has lips. <laughs> it's kind of it creepy, does. isn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> maybe maybe even a little cyberpunk. Yes. So. All right. Well, my my awesome thing of the week is uh, space. People in space. People in the space coming from the America. Uh, so, <laughs> I, I, and, and this is and this is something that was talked about. Like when you know, I, I was actually reminiscing uh, this week about you know when I used to be able to go outside and travel, and was looking at my old videos from the SpaceX uh, at the beginning of uh, uh, March. Was that uh, where I got to go see the SpaceX rocket? Um, the 50th, I think, a successful landing of their uh, booster rockets and, and such. But uh, officially, as I pull up the link here, uh, the next launch will officially have astronauts on board. This is going to happen on the 27th of this the 27th. I got to get rid of my ad block here, apparently. Uh, <laughs> apparently I didn't look at it on this computer, uh, but, uh, you know, on the 27th of this month, uh, you, they're going to do, uh, the SpaceX demo two mission. Um, this will be the first manned flight from the USA, uh, since I believe 2011, uh, was the last one with the shuttle. 
uh, off the top of my head there. So uh, that's going to happen. It's going to be uh, scheduled for 3.10 a.m. So for you early risers on the East Coast, have at it. Or, or late nighters. Or late nighters. Yeah, let's be honest about that. Um, they were, and this is, they were supposed to do a Starlink um, launch, and that got pushed, which moved this up somehow, I think. Like, somehow that got rearranged uh, because of the tropical storm that's currently uh, uh, being encountered, I believe, by North Carolina. So, like, that, that mixed the uh, Starlink satellites uh, that, that you have going on. Have you seen, have we talked about the Starlink satellites on here much? Have you have you seen video of the Starlinks? Not that I remember. So um, yeah, no. So the the uh, 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 Ray that that uh, the photographer like went with to to uh, see the SpaceX that, that works with us on the aero design sh- uh, uh, events. Um, he's he shows me footage that he's taking out over in Texas. Uh, he's from the Fort Worth area, and you can see you know they've launched and and you see a string of lights that are all like multiples of these. Uh, uh, rockets. I think they might launch something like 60 at a time or something like that. Uh, and you see them like, you know, in a line and start to separate out. And of course, now if you look in the night sky, you might have to kind of concern whether that is a star or a satellite that you're seeing because there are so many of them out there. And again, Starlink is the Elon Musk SpaceX uh, venture that is supposed to give us worldwide internet through satellites um, and kind of creates this net it's a network of satellites. So um, that's, it's kind of a fascinating, weird, futuristic thing to watch if you get some video of it. It's pretty, it's pretty wild to see out there. So um, so go check that out. Oh, you, you're, there are the videos back. Um, so look out for that. I mean, no, that, this is, <laughs> as uh, Ponder said, said in the uh, uh, group a little bit ago, uh, this is kind of a big deal. <laughs> Uh, so it is another good question. Will they ever land on the moon again while he's alive? I'm waiting for that one too. So, but I don't know. The only moon mission I'm aware of is to build a station out there. And I feel like we're a pretty far way out from that happening. Space so, force will make it happen. Space force will make it happen. <laughs> yes. Um, uh, 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 what's his face from the office on the, on the Netflix show. We'll find out about it there. Uh, so, all right. Hey, hey, I saw our good friend Rico today uh, when I went to pick up our uh, uh, weekly visit to our friend Slice on Broadway. Uh, our friends in four locations here in Pittsburgh, supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, Beachview, Carnegie, East End, PNC Park. I know a lot of you guys have been going out and supporting them uh, in all this craziness going on. Uh, they're going to they're going to supply you with your perfect pepperoni pizza during the pandemic. Ha! Ah! Well done. Yeah, that was just off the top of the head. <laughs> um, so let's not make that official tagline, please. But <laughs> uh, no, go check them out. And please continue to support our friends at Slice on Broadway. Check them out, sliceonbroadway.com. And you can, and because there is a little bit of controversy, and I don't know where they stand officially, but I'm just saying, help our friends out and support them by ordering through their website and not through. I don't know, some app on your phone, which the website does work on your phone. I know I've ordered it through there. Uh, so go do that or give them a call. They're friendly fellows and ladies. Uh, so, and you might have the man himself, Rico, picking up the phone. So uh, so as, as I've been running into him lately here in the Beachview location, the OG, the original, right up the street here from Sorgatron Media. Okay. Uh, guys, have you been keeping up with Put a Pickle on it? <laughs> have you have you i i don't even want to talk about the game journey because i feel like this has been um um completely shadowed by chachi's latest project put a pickle on it and i'm just i just have to give uh, my best friend his weekly shout out it is candy week um it, it might be it might the search is a little weird on youtube so if you're having trouble uh locating it just uh chachi says on twitter and uh let's say it's candy week he's done a peach gummy and today he did a Cadbury egg, thanks to a recommendation from our friend, an old uh, Wrestling Mayhem Show fan uh, from England today. So um, <laughs> it is fantastic. <laughs> and this theme music that he found is is good. And I'm not going to... I have it in my head, and I just want to shake my booty to it right now. Uh, but <laughs> go check it out. Chachi says on the Twitter, uh, links to his YouTube. 
um, the best the, the the best food blog you're not watching uh, right now. So um, pickle it. <laughs> uh, do they put pickles on their pizza chili? You're asking in the chat room. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure. I mean, I, I'm sure they have pickles because they have other sandwiches. But why not? I, I'm yeah. sure Ch- Chachi should give it a whirl. But we, we, we synergy, synergy, make it happen, mm-hmm. make it happen. All right, let's see what we got here from the uh, Facebook group from the week. And uh, uh, first of all, Potter shared with us this is a this is a pretty big one. Um, Zoom the I have I see I sit here. And I'm staring at a Zoom board, <laughs> and it's not the same Zoom, and it keeps messing with me now that I'm realizing. Um, Zoom, the video conferencing software, um, are actually going to be expanding their U.S. Uh, in the U.S. with engineering uh, centers in Phoenix and Pittsburgh. So, because, I, hey, if you're going to do engineering, you, listen, you got to cover the, the Carnegie Mellon and then also those bright minds at the University of Phoenix. Right. So, um, but uh, I don't know. You guys, are you guys? You're, you're. I know. I know, Brian. You've been using Zoom. I know there's been a lot of improvements lately in the last several weeks, supposedly. But then they broke a bunch of other stuff. So, <laughs> <laughs> I prefer Hangouts. I'll be honest. Mm-hmm. Having used both of them, I have some audio issues with Zoom a lot of times. So there's several interviews where I've recorded where I've had to like really go through and got a lot of the interview because it becomes so mangled that you can't understand anything that, that the person is saying. Mm-hmm. That's my biggest issue with it. Other than that, I mean, it's really easy to use. I, I like the functionality of it. Also, unless you pay for it, you're uh, often, I think you're limited on a certain amount of time that yeah. you can be on it. Yeah. Yeah. There's been uh, some people that have been doing some, some very public kind of things, but they're obviously not paying for it. So there's a weird, like, Hey, the event's going to go from this time to like 10 after. And it's like, what are we doing here, guys? Uh, so it's kind of a, a fascinating thing, but uh, yeah, no, it's it's no, it's good to see you know it, 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 as they're growing, and I think they got caught caught by surprise for the most part, um, and they're finally kind of getting their act together to catch up with the demand and all the issues that have come up from having you know did, did they like triple their user base or something? Oh, I think it was more than that. More than triple. Yeah. 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 Well, I think Zoom is really a good example of why good marketing matters. Mm-hmm. Uh, Google Hangouts has existed forever, but most people have never heard of Google Hangouts, but everybody knows what Zoom is. Mm-hmm. It, it's interesting because like, I was on a call today and someone said something about you know this Zoom meeting and we weren't on a Zoom meeting. It was like Kleenex. Like wow. tissue. Mm-hmm. Like they have, they have yeah. totally... They have totally supplanted Skype. Like mm-hmm. instead of I'll Skype you, I'll Zoom you. Um, it's interesting because I didn't see a lot of the marketing. I felt like it was an overnight thing. Um, but I've I've been on numerous Zoom meetings. Um, I think to the, the point that I see is the frictionless barrier to entry is is what's so captivating about it. Yeah. I mean, if yeah. you have if you have a current Chrome browser you should be able to connect. Um, I think they did, they, they went very far past what anyone had done with like the RTC stuff. Um, it's very impressive, obviously not without problems along the way and bumps in the road, but I, I, even some of the things I've been seeing firsthand from them, they're really answering back and trying to, to, to do the right thing. And it was never intended for this amount of users, even in the enterprise. No, no, they, they're just, just scaling up to that, right? Because, I mean, it's a very business solution and it just kind of got co-opted into the norms mm-hmm. <laughs> through through homeschooling and and, uh, and uh, uh, drink online drinking parties and, and everything like that, right? So, And, I mean, I understand that for the, from a free perspective, right, um, I, I get why there's the 40-minute, Thing. I mean, this is all they do, right? Mm-hmm. Google can Google can make money and monetize your Hangouts meetings and your Gmail account. Um, Zoom just have what has what they have. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised. I want to see who flinches first. Mm-hmm. Who gives up the free tier, Zoom or Google with Meet? 
it'll be interesting. when this is all over. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we, we we're talking about you know we're we're free until September, like we were talking with Kim last week, and uh, and uh, yeah, it's it, it, it'll be interesting. But it also it's also a matter of what happens in the world. Like, it, it, is everything free for now for schools? And then when we you know if inevitably schools don't come back to on location next year or a percentage of them don't is that when we start kind of putting the champ down on it a little bit and, and uh, 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 locking it down and, and, and kind of making, making good on this or, or you just have another batch of filters that'll make it better for the more extensive. I wonder what will happen because, because for us in our school district, we've switched, right? So we mm-hmm. went, we were all zoom and then they quickly actually lit up G suite. Yeah. Like we had a week of zoom and then they, they, while they lit up G Suite for the elementary schools, and then we we flipped over to that. So based on their G Suite subscription, I could see it being more palatable to keep because I'm guessing that it's probably negotiated into the price of Suite. It's school pricing, right? Yeah. So, so if you to, already to, have all those Google Docs and everything because that's what you worked with, then like Google Meet just rolls right into that, like it did for us. And it, it's been, I mean, the quality I think has been. It, it, you know, anecdotally, I feel like I feel like it's better. I don't know if you guys out there watching this on video, um, and and you guys, we, we've had less problems getting new people on Meet than Hangouts for sure. Because hmm. there's a lot of these like, why why can't you click on the link and it works on Hangouts and and Meet? I, I've literally had one person have a problem, <laughs> and <laughs> the second person was because they were using Safari on a computer that probably hasn't been updated for a while. So, I mean, it's been pretty, pretty, pretty good to go. So I actually don't see the, fr- I'm sorry. No, go ahead. I don't actually don't see the free version of Zoom going away. I, I almost feel like it's going to be similar to Slack where you have mm-hmm. a certain time limit, but you have to pay for more because it gets people into it. And then they go into the business world and then they have to pay uh, for more in order to, to get longer li- meetings. Little things like, man, I'd love to use Zoom, but I haven't paid for it. And I have an hour long podcast that I'd love to use it for. Yeah, you know, exactly. case in point, right? Achilla, you were saying? Yeah. But doesn't Slack have something in their terms and conditions where technically they're entitled to your free data? Oh, like, I'm not Slack's, sure. I think Slack's actually monetizing that in some way, shape, or form. Yeah, there's uh, questions. If you're worried about security, Slack may not be the way to go, especially if you're not paying for it. So, yeah, if you're but not that's, paying for that's it. something everybody needs to uh, weigh in if you're a company. Mm-hmm. Just had a conversation with somebody that wanted to do live streaming but did not want to be on Facebook uh, for reasons. And I was like, listen, you can not be on Facebook, but then you're just going to have to pay for another service. And I don't think you're in a position to do that. You know, it's, it's one thing if you're a company, if you're a big bank international and you want to pay for a Vimeo account, that's a, a thousand or a couple thousand a year. That's one thing. But when you're, you know, a nonprofit, it doesn't work, you know, and, 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 and you know, and, and even, those nonprofit prices, depending on your size, still don't work. And I was like, well, then you need a way whether Facebook works for you, right? Mm-hmm. And all these other options. So, I, but on a personal level, I've mm-hmm. been using the Facebook Messenger video to the chat new, with friends. Yeah. The, and I love the, it. The new groups one or just the individual just Messenger? The, just the individual one because it okay. was a little bit easier. You, just, you know, you invite, invite everybody into a conversation, but yeah. I think the, the, um, the room works the same way. You just, mm-hmm. it, then they get a code to click on versus me and, and calling everybody. But I've, we've been using that and I've been on those calls for like chatting with friends for like two, two and a half hours. Mm-hmm. And we're playing, we have face filters. You have some basic games. I mean, they're not super exciting games, but they're def- definitely enough to make you giggle if you want to do things with friends and the video and audio have been fine. And as long as you're using Chrome, <laughs> that was the only issue we had so far was someone had to download a, a newer version of Chrome mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. to get Messenger to work on their laptop. But I've been using that. As, you know what I mean? Like we're not sharing anything like secrets or, or along those lines. But I mean, like I've, I've enjoyed doing that with uh, just like on a personal level. And that's free. And you can talk forever. Yeah. Yeah. That's fantastic. I love using that that feature actually because I'm somebody who I, I really hate talking on the phone, but with video I can do that much better. So I've been using that to call people. It, it's definitely awesome. I, I definitely I need the the, the cues, the mm-hmm. facial cues and things, or I'll just keep talking. If if you if I'm talking to you and explaining something over the phone and you don't give me anything back. I'll just keep going because I think either I'm not explaining it correctly or you need some more information. <laughs> See, I'm the exact opposite. I tune out because, like, I, I start like 
my mind will immediately fixate onto something else outside of the conversation and somebody <laughs> will talk to me for 20 minutes and I won't know a single thing that they said. So okay. I, I have the opposite problem. I can't Got pay attention. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Well, speaking of Facebook, they did uh, make another move this week where they uh, uh, picked up Giphy. Giphy. Yeah. I'm going with Giphy uh, to be a part of the uh, Instagram team. So it's already, I think it was like a, a giant percentage of that, of course, was already um, a percent, like a percentage of Giphy was already through Facebook properties <laughs> at this point. So <laughs> it was just kind of a no brainer as far as that goes. Um, I mean, I don't know how they're monetizing otherwise, so okay. I, uh, this this is pretty big. We have some stuff on Giphy. The, the, it wor- the only thing that worries it, me but... is like, are we going to lose some of the integrations? Like, are they going to abandon? Yeah. yeah. Like keyboard plugins. Uh, yeah. Like well, what? Here's, here's a good point that was brought up with that. I, I heard somewhere along the line of podcast listening and news this week was. Well, they could, but also all those things that you have already pre-installed with, with Giphy, like keyboards and, and part of other apps and things like that, now you have a little Facebook and all that. And now Facebook gets all that input from all those other apps because they own this. So mm-hmm. it actually plays perfectly. Unless the app themselves, because uh, Twitter, we know, doesn't play nice with, fa- with Instagram. Mm-hmm. So if, if Twitter decides to excise Giphy, Giphy because it's a Facebook brand right now for whatever reason, that's possible. But I don't know. Or or when I do a search in Giphy, am I going to get advertisements? Uh, well, I, I imagine. I have a feeling there's already sponsored gifts in there that we haven't seen yet. You know, like certain certain brands maybe popping up when you type in an emotive emotion or something, right? Well, there's you'll see the ones the popular ones are a lot of times TV shows like Netflix. Yeah. Yeah. and things so they're obviously paying for that <laughs> yeah yeah just be like really this like random show on, on netflix well, all right i guess so uh moving well, on what, what real quick what did mm-hmm. surprise me though is i read a press article that stated facebook didn't buy it necessarily to to complement their facebook brand as much as they did for instagram which i thought was odd yeah giphy i don't recall giphy being on a lot of instagram well, and I, and I would never think of like the commented, like putting gifts in my comments on Instagram, like I would in other social media places. I've never actually seen that done. You're right. Mm. Now that you it's all it. it's all stories. Yeah, yeah. Mm. It's all in stories. That's all the gifts in the stories. Oh, uh, okay. Because you can add those the things, and then you could do like the three tiered gif. Hmm. Awesome. That makes sense. <laughs> uh, that was uh, that was submitted by oh I gotta get that noted from me that was submitted uh, to our group by Doug our good friend at Yin's Love Barbecue uh, also Amanda over at Bold Pittsburgh boldpgh.com they just had a new website redesign I believe so go check that out I haven't had a chance yet but I saw the post about it um, here's a way to create WWE style MacBook memojis uh, with stickers. Because remember we were talking about that last week with the the memoji kind of splash that they had on there. Here's here's the visual for you if you if you and there's like those cool uh, little stickers on your on your desktop. So I guess you can create your own laptop stickers. There's a little little tip iPad tutorial uh, uh, they had going on there. And yeah, so this is how you can take your memoji and turn it into like emoticons, like you holding your hand up. Uh, giving a thumbs up, thumbs down, things like that. I, I think I stumbled on a version of this because I, I discovered that I could still be, send you a panda gif, or I'm sorry, a panda emoji. Uh, you know that that it should be the the uh, emojis um, um, on my iPhone 8. So yeah, I guess it just kind of um, you know generates all the versions of it when you do your avatar. That's awesome. So. Uh, I don't know. That just feels like something I'd, I'd see you digging in on a little bit. Nope. No, you're not. I mean, you're not going to so, emoji so yourself. No, I didn't. I'm hmm? oh, sorry. Go ahead, Chilla. So, so here's what's weird. So with the new MacBook, now I have to cover it with new stickers. Mm-hmm. So now I'm thinking I can take this and I can before I put the stickers on the MacBook, I can scan them. <laughs> and then I can place them on my Memojis mm-hmm. with this exact same stickers as on my MacBook. 
There you go. Or it's, maybe I just have way too much time on my hands. Super meta. It, apparently, obviously, the <laughs> lockdown has gotten to him. Uh, so uh, let's see what else is going on here. Um, we'll skip that. We'll skip that one for now. Uh, Ronnie shared a video over on the group. You guys can go check it out over there. It's a Bruce Willis starring game from the PlayStation One called Apocalypse. Hmm. I remember seeing the ads for this when it came out. It is not. I don't think it held up well at all. Uh, I want to give a shout out, of course, in house here at Sorgatron Media. Also houses Psychic Media Services. Let us be the sidekick in your superhero project. Of course, uh, doing everything uh, today. Just did a site visit for a uh, wonderful church up in Manaka, uh, working with them on on live streaming. As obviously with everything that's going on here, um, helping people kind of realign uh, with with uh, uh, the new situation in the world today. So. Um, it's been a really interesting few weeks for that, uh, helping podcasts go re- remote. And also, uh, we have just worked on our plan for doing in-person uh, podcasting and uh, uh, video shoots. And, and so we can do that safely um, under the new guidelines by the state of Pennsylvania and make sure everybody is safe and still continue to create good stuff. Uh, for great, awesome stuff for our clients out there. Uh, let us be the sidekick in your superhero project. Check out everything going on at sidekickmediaservices.com. And I know Missy's been sharing some great blogs from over there, talking about some of the background of what we do here at Sidekick Media Services. A lot of the technology that brings you this fine podcast and Facebook live streams, uh, stream. So uh, I, I, am I the only one on Google Play Music? Am I the only one that, that went down that rabbit hole uh, years ago? Yes. Yes. The only one yeah. that uploaded all their music yep. to it. And now that's just my locker. And then I heard about YouTube music and I was a little concerned about it. It's okay, guys. If you're in the same boat as me, um, YouTube music will transfer all of your Google Play songs with one click. We'll see how well it works when it's finally rolled out here. Uh, so that is a feature that is coming up. I'm glad, I, if nothing else... If you're concerned about Google and how they keep changing and killing products, they have usually been very good about takeout, right, Chilla? They've been good about what? Takeout? Takeout. You know, the Google takeout, where you can take your information out of Google oh, or yes. transfer it out. Like, even, about it, like yes. Google Wave, you could have taken all of your information out of Google Wave. I don't know what you do with it, but uh, but like, you know, it, it makes sense since they have another music product that they would transfer that over. All of your uploaded songs, all of your favorites and algorithms, and all my likes are apparently going to carry right over to YouTube Music, which makes me wonder and mix with all of your YouTube um, likes and things too. That's to me that's important because that plays into the algorithm. Like that's something that's actually I've noticed with Apple Music because it had all my likes and favorites mm-hmm. from the dawn of time with my iTunes music library. (laughs) Like when I play my favorites mixes, it pulls stuff out of the archives, like that I would have listened to repetitively Mm -hmm. in the, like the early two thousands. So I, I'm very thankful for that kind of stuff. So it's, it's important that they, they allow you to do that or they, they keep track of that metadata. And if, if anybody's going to keep track of that kind of information, it's Google. It's all in there somewhere, uh, somewhere, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, what are you, uh, Brian Dutters? What are you using for music these days? So, I'm using Amazon Music only because they gave me a free month. There you go. So, yeah. <laughs> Dutters, I'm I'm in a I'm in a weird state of my Pandora is so curated, like it's so where I want it in my mm-hmm. stations that I have a hard time giving it up. Mm-hmm. Uh, cause it's, it's five bucks a month for the lot with no commercials or, yeah. So it's like, I have a hard time giving that up, but I've been dabbling in Sirius because my mom has Sirius. So I'm able to share her account. Um, it, it, it works well. Certain channels work well that I like, but the, it just, it's not quite what my Pandora is <laughs> yet. <laughs> I think it, it's going to take a little bit of time. I mean, Pandora, I've, I've had, got, it's, it's had to have been around for at least 10 years now, hasn't it? <laughs> yeah. It's been around forever. Yeah, so it's it's yeah. finally figured me out, but yeah, that's all I've been. Using. And like as far as like anything I've downloaded, it's all old stuff that's probably illegal. <laughs> <laughs> and moving on, I mean, that was yeah. one of the nice things about like the 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 upload your locker to like the Apple and Google because if it, if you did have that nice collection of stuff, maybe it got off of a 
Napster or a Kazam or 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 or, or something. Lime, Twenty Lime years Lime Wire, Lime Wire, <laughs> Morbius. Mm-hmm. I think was one of them. Oh no. Uh, <laughs> You upload it, and now as you play it, I think you are now contributing to that band that you may have pilfered from twenty years Ooh. ago. I believe that's how it worked, right? Because all the rights, well, yeah, because they're there. they're getting the plays. So, because mm-hmm. a lot of those services, when you upload, if it's a if it's a direct match for one of the the uh, yeah songs, they're not playing yeah, my they're they're not playing my bad rip of Nirvana's Unplugged. They're playing like the good version <laughs> they have, right? That I yes. listen to like daily. And which that was a real Ooh. CD that I had, right? So so if you feel a little ga- guilty about back in the day and how you acquired your uh, amazing uh, uh collection digitally, like it's it it was like it was like it was like a a a a, a music sin pass. Of some sort, <laughs> it's reparations. It's it's music reparations for the Napster Napster area era, right? So, <laughs> you know what? I think we all have uh, paid a price in in terms of like spyware and mm-hmm. viruses and oh, stuff yeah. that we've accidentally downloaded using mm-hmm. these old programs. Yeah. Oh no, this was not. Yeah. Let's be, let's be honest. This was not a good idea. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's it, it was not a good situation for anybody, and you know. Yeah. There were no winners. There's there were no, no winners. winners. No. There were really no winners <laughs> in the long run. So, especially when, oh, what was it? When Madonna, you downloaded Madonna's album and it was just her telling you to F off? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Like, now, that's actually kind of awesome. I, I would like oh, to download. <laughs> that, was, that was when everybody started wising up to it. So they would just yeah. flood it with the BS version of it. And, and that's what would you get anytime you search for it because it was just, just populated, you know, because that's what they would do. Oh boy! Uh, <laughs> <laughs> music reparations. Hold on, let me capture this. Uh, so <laughs> There's a show title. Show title. Um, it's just going to be the Pope with a Napster symbol on the top. Uh, <laughs> it's not. That's not bad, is it? Uh, Chilla, uh, you you got a you got a story over here about Len- Lenovo uh, smart frames. So I didn't. I don't remember seeing this announcement. I think it was back. It sounded like they announced it back at like CES. Mm-hmm. Um, but Lenovo is launching their new smart frame. Uh, it's going to be a 21 inch 1080p display that hangs on your wall is all super pretty has, um, you can wave at it to advanced photos. You can upload photos from your, um, mobile device. Interestingly enough, they've thought forward and put in a microphone and two, two watt or in some two watt speakers, so hopefully it'll get future state Amazon Alexa and Google Assistant Assistant integration. No, oh, that'd be nice for um, like ambient sounds in your house kind of thing, right? Mm-hmm. Or just being able to uh, another thing in your house in another room that you can say okay mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and give it a, give it a command. Um, what I thought was interesting, it, it does to me three hundred ninety nine dollars for this is not out of the realm of expensive. It's and what a- really caught my eye is they're doing a Indiegogo 50% discount. And that's Lenovo. Yeah. yeah. And you, I feel like you know they're going to make this product. I'm not, yeah, lo- yeah. I'm not losing my money so, on this one. So, so Indiegogo is really big about being a mechanism to fund manufacturing. Katie, I think, were you at the one, the, the one Indiegogo presentation with me over at ETC? Maybe it was, Where was else. It? It was crowdsourcing. It was it, was, it yeah. was more of like getting the feedback. Yeah, as you get the funds to make the thing, and you know, it was it was very focused on the hardware side. Like they have a whole team just dedicated to that hardware funding, testing, prototyping, and bringing to market kind of situation, right? So it was really kind of fascinating. And I think I went to the wrong presentation. Uh, <laughs> so uh, you never know. <laughs> you learn something. Yeah. It's like you never know what you're going to run into. It's like, that's interesting. Indiegogo. And it's just like, wait, oh, no, this is maybe not for um, podcast money raising or something, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, or whatever we were trying to do at the time. Uh, but uh, yeah, no, I can see as big as they've gotten to become a platform, it kind of doesn't surprise me something as big as Lenovo would do this. And this isn't an obvious thing that I think everybody, this isn't a thing that's going to fly off the shelves of Best Buy or Walmart, I don't think, right? It's a very specialized I, thing. I don't know. For, for what it is, I don't know. Like, I would think about getting my mom one of these. Okay. 
Like okay. if I could, like I've honestly thought about because my mom and like even my in-laws, they don't have any of like the Amazon devices with the display on it. Mm-hmm. But if I could give them the display and then families could upload into like an Amazon photos of, of like the grandkids and whatnot, like, and it could pop yeah. up on their devices, almost like a little picture frame. Yeah. And then they yeah. could also yeah. use it for video. Like this doesn't have a video camera in it, but if you could use, like they could use that device for like um, video conferencing. I don't, I don't know. Like I would, I'm, I would think about this as a, as a, a mainstream product. Mm-hmm. And it would get cheaper as it comes out, right? Mm-hmm. As, as it kind of populates, like there, there might be cheaper renditions, smaller ones, just with the, uh, you know, with all, all, all the same kind of guts. Yeah, yeah, the cool thing I thought about this was, is they put a special anti-reflective coating on it to kind of mm-hmm. give it a matte, a matte picture like look, which if, if you can do that and it's not going to be like glare and reflection and you can make it look nice. I don't, I, I don't know. I think this could, this could go a lot of places. Basically, uh, this is Star Wars. So, like, if you, like, seriously, you go into a Picard's ready room and you see an Echo show on his desk, and now mm-hmm. this is just the wall panels to like go into mm-hmm. the hollow deck. <laughs> exactly. Gotcha, gotcha. Uh, don't don't tweet us about his use of Star Wars versus Star Trek. I was gonna. Uh, <laughs> did I just say Star Wars? Uh, yeah, so I, yeah. I told you I woke up and came in here. Yes, this That's is fine. Star Trek. That's fine. That's fine. <laughs> It's all mushed. It's all mushed. I get it. I get it. I get it. Um, there's a lot of stuff happening right now. Listen, there's a lot <laughs> happening. There, there's there's a Star Wars. There's a space. There's a space uh, force. There's uh there's a lot happening right now. Too much sci-fi. We're going to space. <laughs> yes. So we, we we all binged something over the weekend. I, you know, it's just just where we're at right now. Uh, Katie, you have uh, uh, another uh, uh, another Animal Crossing story in here. Yeah, uh, this I thought this was pretty. It was pretty cool, and it's you know with with COVID and you know coronavirus right now, and especially when we're losing people like friends and family, we're not able to have the proper funerals that we're used to, where we're going in and grieving and, and mm-hmm. kind of talking about what you know, sharing the memories, sharing the things, and a lot of people have taken to Animal Crossing to kind of do this and kind of create this environment. Um, there's a way to create tombstones. I, I think I showed you all a few weeks back where I had created a bunch of tombstones and it was just me being weird and like, yeah, this is yeah, my, I, you th- know, something th- happened here. <laughs> this is you just be like, this is what my basement looks like. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's fine. <laughs> totally normal. But people are creating, um, grave sites for their family members. And like, and in this article, it was, it was the one lady girl had lost her grandmother and, you know, wasn't able to do the f- normal funeral. So mm. she put a grave site because they're near the ocean, because her near the beach, because that's what her grandma oh, loved. And under, she planted a, the, under a lighthouse. Mm-hmm, with her favorite flower. Oh. And this was a way of paying tribute and being able to be, feel that connection when you're not able to have that right now. And there was even one that they had done a full on funeral where they it looks like that they the person had been playing the game and passed away. And they opened up his island and you could come in and do kind of it's it's depending on how you feel. It is kind of it's 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 unusual, mm-hmm. but it was a way for them to come in like a funeral home where, you you know, there was you go in and pay your respects. And then they were had the um, there's a, there's a kind of um, in the square, there's like a message board, like a bulletin board and people were leaving messages there. And it was just their way of being able to process and yeah. kind of have that in the you know digital sense. Because we're just not able to get together right now. Yeah, it, it, well, there's a, a big thing, especially when we're talking about churches. You know, it's not about mm-hmm. the building; it's about you know being where you need to be. You know, and and, mm-hmm. and you know being with you know the, the the you know say the vibe. You know the the fellowship wherever that is, and you know digitally counts too. And mm-hmm. and that's kind of the same thing. If this is the thing that helps you kind of replace being in the place, so you can do what you need to do. Like it, it completely mm-hmm. works, and so many people do feel at home on Animal Crossing. Mm-hmm. So it works out. Oh, and that's it, pretty cool. And especially, I mean, I mean, you're you have been doing, as we talked about several weeks ago, your niece's uh, parties and party yeah. games over over Animal Crossing. It makes sense that you can do this with, you know, along with a Zoom call, FaceTime, something along those lines to do what you need to do too, right? Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, I think it's pretty cool. Awesome. I feel like somebody from Animal Crossing should be on the pandemic response team because they have yeah. so many different ideas. 
I think help they, people cope. I think they are yeah. the pandemic response team at this point. Yes. There's many things yeah. of kind of it's like it's like how Nintendo helped the the much of the world cope with with these world events, right? Like there's it was, gonna be so many journals, like academic journals across oh. the board between social media, sociology, you know, tech about Animal Crossing and how it, we've all adjusted using Animal Crossing in this particular. <laughs> It's the strangest, like, we all talked about, like, you know, you know, while we have uh, your VR goggles, Facebook are, are doing these avatar meeting things. There was a story, it's probably in the rundown still, of, of, of them rolling this out. It was like, no, all we needed was Animal Crossing <laughs> as our avatars and our, our places and our spaces, because that's where everybody can work. Um, related to Animal Crossing, I know that I shouldn't even bother with Animal Crossing because I know I can't create anything possibly better than Danny DeVito Island uh, that this one user created. It is a it's it is an island uh, shaped like Dan, Danny DeVito. Well, the, the terrain is shaped like Danny DeVito with the glasses. So I, um, I give up. I'm out. I'm out. I can't do anything about that. Um, <laughs> also related, and I don't think I linked it here, um, snapping turtle hell. Somebody yeah. covered their entire island with snapping turtles. Um, which do hurt you, I believe, in the game, correct? I've Maybe. never encountered one, so I no. haven't actually seen a real reaction to it. <sighs> uh, okay, I got another fun one we have to get to before we get out. Two quick ones. Have you seen Room Raider on Twitter? Nobody? No. Mm-hmm. Nobody? I have not seen Even my now. shares? Mm-mm. So this is, it's a uh, uh, rate my Skype room on Twitter yeah. and it's, it goes through and you see everybody's background from CNN, CBS, PBS, and they give a rating and a review for everybody's, <laughs> everybody's <laughs> background, awesome. judging from the books to the pictures, to the plants. They give a star rating and I, you know, a rating out of 10, uh, for instance, uh, from the UK, um uh in what may be our first pantry setup add something to the wall at least a calendar seven out of ten uh and this was on <laughs> it is yeah it's, it's, harsh. it's definitely in the pa- the pantry he's still got a seven out of ten though that's not bad yeah that's, that's not, not bad, bad at all let's see let's let me just dive in there's just a picture of a cat well balanced well lit splash of color uh nora's nora's cat is is an easy at eight out of ten uh, let's see. Here is a random one from MSNBC. Uh, let's see. A Room Raider, Team Schmidt update, flowers on point, the pineapple in stock, <laughs> the pineapple, a stocking horse, the the urn awaits, 10 out of 10. And it's like an all black motif uh, <laughs> of his kitchen in the background. <laughs> So um, this is fun. I mean, we've talked about how everybody's struggling. I get messages um, from our, our friend, uh, formerly of the mainstream media, uh, um, just judging the Skype quality, video quality, Zoom quality, whatever, on the Today Show <laughs> and how bad it is uh, from time <laughs> to time. So that's been fun. Uh, so in the meantime, we're doing what we're doing here in our little studio. So Today Show, call me. Maybe Maybe we can help. Maybe we can help anybody out there. Uh, uh, I didn't even know that that was a thing until I had a meeting uh, for PGH Museums and Missy was on there with like San Francisco and behind her and I'm like, where in the hell are you? Oh, and don't yeah, don't that. don't even get started on the on the Zoom backgrounds. Yeah. <laughs> so, well, I, you know, I need to. Um, oh, I got to make sure I copy those over off my old laptop. Um, <laughs> that's the one thing I feel like Meet Google Meet is missing is I don't have a background replacement. Yeah. That I do mm-hmm. in that I do in Teams and I do in Zoom, which I feel is for the best uh, for live podcasting. So <laughs> <laughs> to keep people under control, you know how bad it was when we had there was there used to be in the early days of Google Hangout plugins, and there Pirate was hats. a soundboard, and that was a problem on the Mayhem Show, guys. That was <laughs> a big problem, and since I've had a zero tolerance policy on soundboards across all the podcasts. <laughs> So, yeah. All right, guys. Hey, Brian, thank you for joining us. What's going on lately over at PG, P, 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 pghmuseums.org? So we just released a new video uh, yesterday. It is called The Painted Bridge of Sawmill Run, which takes you to a 
bridge that has been taken over by graffiti artists, an old train bridge that is along a trail that connects you from Beachview to Mount Washington. Nice. So it's a great place you can check out to get some exercise while being away from other people. And there's lots of room to, to get around where you're not on top of people and experience some awesome public art in the middle of nature with a nice stream that goes below you. It's really, really awesome. So I suggest uh, checking that out. And then we also have COVID Conversations, which has been going on every week where we talk to different people, uh, creative people and museum directors and uh, people like that about how they are dealing with the pandemic and uh, how they're either still creating or trying to keep their audience engaged while their establishment is closed, things like that. So, uh, And then we always end with uh, an inspiring message as to how they are personally dealing with the situation to try to give people advice and, and ideas on how they too can uh, cope with the situation. So I would suggest checking those out as well. Awesome. A lot of great content going on over there. Please follow the Facebook uh, bookmark that PGH museums.org and, uh, and, and, and keep up with it. So I know a lot of people supporting that, uh, that project as well, even in the pandemic. So that's really good to see uh, and, and good to see there's a lot of great content uh, that maybe looks a little different as, as we're seeing across the board on us might look a little mm -hmm. different than if we were back to normal, but uh, still, you know, it's good that everybody's still connecting and making stuff. So awesome. And Dutters, she'll just be hanging out in animal crossing. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Uh, updates on okay. Kate, Kate Marie PGH uh, on the Instagram. Yeah, that's like most of the stuff. Not as much on Facebook, but mostly on there. There you go, including um, uh, uh, the 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 pants of chemo day. Yes, my chemo yes. socks pants combo, which were a big hit today. Yes. Dinosaur pants, which I do wear to the, the museum. Those are my nice. museum pants. Yeah, Fantastic. I have dinosaur pants, and then uh, I have a cato socks. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> awesome. So we're into the punny socks phase of chemo. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Uh, and John Chichilla at Chilla on the Twitter. John Chichilla on the Facebook. With all the CPUs, you do it, man. It's just, it's so crisp. No way. I mean, I can't. I can't explain to you how. It's like you're right here. How buttery smooth it is. <laughs> everything is it is it's it's like it's like you're right here on one of these uh prosumer cameras we have on the studio here it's it's fantastic that's what happens gonna, when you push gonna, 4k into <laughs> like you shove 4ks into a 720 hd hole is you get what <laughs> what's happening with chilla right there right yep so, it's all com it's all compressed down in a good way yes yes hey, you start with the good and then, I mean, if you compress all that down to, like, DVD, it'll be the best-looking DVD you have going on. Guys, please go check out everything on AwesomeCast.com, SorgatronMedia.com. And I want to give a shout-out to somebody I had noted here that's doing something really cool, and I can't find it now. Uh, but we got, of course, listen to your parents over on the Facebook page. Uh, we also have... I can't find it. I know it's in here somewhere. Somebody's doing something cool. Uh, so, um, no, it's not Danny DeVito Island. Oh, Rise. Rise is doing Rise Wrestling. I know you guys aren't, maybe not all of you wrestling fans, but this is a really cool, um, speaking of people doing things in the pandemic, um, they are doing a Fire Pro Wrestling. This is a video game on PlayStation and Steam. Um, somebody on the roster... Won't say who, but I'll give a random shout out to BNS about uh, uh, created the roster of this independent professional wrestling group here in Pittsburgh that we've worked with uh, for years on, on their video over at IndieWrestling.us. And they're going to have, they have actual promos from the wrestlers leading into their, their matchups here that, and I believe this is going to happen uh, soon. They don't have a date yet on it. Uh, according to this post, uh, but uh, it will air on their Patreon page, and and uh, so go check that out. They'll have episode one. They're going to do three matches on there. A really cool uh, kind of thing to uh, have a virtual Rise Wrestling show uh, that's happening there. So nice. uh, from that, we have a lot of stuff with wrestling. Please stay tuned over Indie Wrestling US Wrestling Mayhem Show. Our friends over at Fight Underground Wrestling Wrestling Alliance, Renegade Wrestling Alliance. They're doing an interactive voting tournament that we've been rolling out over, over several weeks. Just did a great watch along with Prospect Pro Wrestling on Saturday night. You can go back and see the wrestlers watching back some of their matches. Uh, some broadcasting from a strip joint. Legitimately, that happened. Uh, some broadcasting from their car for some reason. I don't know why. Uh, so go check all those out. And there's some things 
in the planning stages for this weekend as well. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. Thank you, everybody, in the chat room. We'll see you guys next time. You have been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.